Okay, is the microphone working? No problem. Not working? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Okay, good morning, everybody. <laughs> we'll start one more time. <laughs> Okay, so good morning again. I'm James. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Recruitment at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And today, I would like to talk to you guys about exploring different college opportunities, what it's going to take to make yourselves the best possible candidates to be part of those college um, opportunities, <laughs> and how to pay for college ultimately, right? Because does anybody think that college is going to be expensive? Yes, you're absolutely right. So you definitely want to learn the best ways to start working on paying for school right now. So with that, we're going to start with what I like to call the mountain lion path. This is what we consider at UCCS to be your best options to be admitted to the university, how to pay for school, where you're going to live, and uh, um, getting registered for your classes. So when you're kind of checking all those different things out, you definitely want to be um, paying attention to this because it's going to help you with any different college or university that you're looking at. Okay, so we have four pretty easy steps for you. Okay, so your first step is admissions. Any college or university that you're looking at, you need to be applying for admission. So they all have different requirements. That's why we suggest that you apply early. We want you to start looking at different colleges and universities, especially in the state of Colorado, because everyone is different and everyone is unique. So we want you to be the most comfortable and find the one that's going to be the best fit for you. Does anybody know what they want to study or what they want to be after they graduate from college? What do you want to be? Um, I'm kind of generally Engineering, okay, so you're going to be looking for schools that are focused on engineering or can offer really great engineering programs. I want to be involved in the design of the art. Okay, so probably engineering or art or um, architecture. Well, a job that includes my Okay, so definitely. That's what I mean by design of the art. Okay, perfect. Law enforcement, so criminal justice, criminology, something along those lines, right? Okay. So as you guys are looking through those, hearing engineering, hearing something creative, artistic, hearing law enforcement, that means none of you guys are going to be looking for schools that teach cooking, right? You guys are going to be looking for schools that focus in those areas that you're interested in. So that being the case, that's going to help you narrow that search down a little bit. So you'll start looking for those schools that can help you in those areas. So that's going to help you apply. I always suggest that you choose three or four schools that you want to apply to because that's what's going to help you really narrow down that path and decide which one's going to be right and finding out if you're eligible for those schools. And then financial aid is your second step. That's going to be on paying for college, and we'll take a look at that here in just a few minutes. And then housing. Housing can play a very important factor in the college search process and what you're looking for. Because if you don't like where you're going to be living, do you think you're going to be very successful overall? And then finally, orientation is registering for your classes. So your first step is that admissions process. At UCCS, we make it very easy. We have it up on our website. You just go to uccs.edu. You click on the Apply Now button that's right there. It'll take you to a website and a web page that will take about 10 or 15 minutes to fill out an application. Keep in mind that every school has a different application process. So you want to do your research to find out what those college application processes are going to be. Some schools have it online, make it very easy like UCCS does. Other schools still have the paper applications where you have to write everything in and submit it in the mail. So just keep an eye out for that and know that those are different options as you're applying for school. 
So at UCCS, we need your application. We need your application fee, your official high school and or college transcripts, and your official ACT or SAT scores. Is anybody in here taking uh, college level classes in high school? Okay, so you guys that are taking those classes, you'll have to submit a college transcript along with your high school transcript. Um, because you're taking those courses and we want to see that you got credit for those and we want to give you credit for those. So submitting those is going to help you. Traditional students that are only taking high school level courses, you only need to submit your official high school transcripts from your high school. And then official ACT scores. Everybody in here is going to a Colorado high school, right? So you've all either already taken the ACT or you're about to take the ACT right here pretty soon. Well, you want to do really well on that because that's going to kind of help you um, determine where you're going to be successful when you're looking for universities. But after you've applied and you submit these four things, every school in the state of Colorado that is state run has what we call an index chart on the university level. This is called the CCHE index. This is we take a look at your GPA across the bottom and your ACT score across the top. Every school uses this chart differently so you want to be looking for this chart, but know what their requirements are based by their individual institutions. So at UCCS, we look at your GPA across the bottom here and your ACT up across the left-hand side. We bring you in. If you're in this gold area, this big block here, a good chance you're going to be admitted to the university and that we're going to feel that you're going to be a successful candidate. So as you're looking at that with your grades and ACTs, this is why it's so important to keep those grades and ACT scores high throughout high school because this is really what, this is your first impression that you're giving to colleges and universities. Then if you're in the blue or black area, that's what a group of professionals that we call admissions counselors are there for. They're there to help you. They're advocates for you as you're looking for higher education. They want to sit down and talk with you and your family. They want to know about you. And if your grades were low and you're in that area, they want to know why. That way they can make really good recommendations to you for if you need to go to a community college for a year or two and build your skill levels and then come to a university. Or if you're ready to start at the university, but something happened to you throughout high school. You got sick. Something happened in the family. Things like those things happened. You didn't realize how important high school was you are able to explain that to the admissions counselors and the admissions departments and they're able to say, okay, maybe it's not you and your skill levels, maybe it's just an outside source and we can admit you to the university that way. So there's different choices as you're looking and just know that your first impression that you're giving to colleges and universities is your grades and your GPA and then we'll start looking at you as an individual after we've seen those, uh, those test scores and that GPA. All right, so what's it going to cost to go to school? That's a big question that a lot of students have. Nobody in here said that it was going to be inexpensive. It, it is going to be an expensive process. So what you're looking at at UCCS, and keep in mind that every school across the state is different in tuition and prices, but this is kind of a rough estimate of what you would be looking at. So for per year, for 15 credit hours a semester, 30 credit hours in a year, this is what your tuition and fees would look like, is just around $9,000. Then, if you're going to live on campus, living in the city of Colorado Springs means you don't have to live on campus if you don't want to, but many students do because that's your opportunity to get involved in campus life, be a part of the campus community, and just be part of everything that goes on. So, you might think about that, and that's a price that you have to take into consideration. And then you look at the $20,000 at the bottom of the screen there, and that's a big number, right? Does anybody have $20,000 that they can give to me right now? No? No. No? Okay. Well, that's okay. I don't have that either. So we want to help you find the best ways to pay for it. If you're looking at out-of-state schools, this is something to keep in mind too. There are lots of great schools across our nation for you to go to college. However, you see, this is what we charge out-of-state students to go to UCCS. So this is what out-of-state schools are going to uh, charge you. So as you're looking for different schools, keep in mind that it's much more affordable to go to one of the great colleges and universities that we have here in the state than it is to go out-of-state. However, out-of-state is an option if that's what you're choosing to do. So how are you going to pay for it, right? So don't be scared. It's okay because now we have options for you to pay for this. 
Your first step is financial aid. If you visit the UCCS financial aid website, you can get help with this. It teaches you about different types of aid, what's out there and what's available to you. There's also the option in there that uh, you can go to other colleges and universities' websites because they'll help you figure out what financial aid deadlines are, what's offered through their institutions. The four different types of financial aid that you should really be focusing on is scholarships, grants, work study, and student loans. These four different types are going to be your best chances at helping you to pay for school. Everybody wants scholarships. Be aware of that. You definitely want to be looking at scholarships and applying for scholarships right now if you haven't done so already. You can do it through universities. Every university has their own scholarships that they can award to students. But then there's a lot of outside scholarships that you can find by going online and just searching for scholarships through local organizations, national organizations. Uh, there are scholarships out there for everything, so just keep that in mind. Then government grants, work study, and student loans all come off of your FAFSA. Has everybody heard of the FAFSA? And if you haven't, you will hear very soon. It's the federal government's way of helping you to pay for school. Um, so by filling that out and having that in by March 1st of every year, you're going to be able to help you pay for school along those lines. And they'll put you in for government grants. Work study is really cool, and that might be another decision that you're making when you're looking at a college campus. Because as you're looking at st um, student work study, you want to know, is it just through the federal government that they're offering work study? Or can you work on campus through a student hourly position? The great things about working on campus is it's just like having a part-time job on your college campus that's helping you to pay for school. They can't make you work during your classes, so you get time off for that. If you need time off to study, you can usually go talk to your supervisors and they'll give you time off for that. And it gets you part of that campus community. So it's a great option for you as students to take a look at those different areas. Then there's students. Sure. Okay. Copy sign, so he said, "Go ahead and start again." So you're paying uh, the four years of college, uh, and then when you graduate and you get a jo job, um, you have to pay back the loan. Is that what this is all talking about? Yes, just this section right here is talking about the student loans, government grants, and scholarships. You don't ever have to pay back work study. You never have to pay back only loans. Does uh, UCCS provide uh, vocational rehab, VR? Yes, depending on what kind you're looking at. There's lots of different vocational rehab out there, but we have our disability services office on campus that will help every student regardless of what their situation is. <laughs> Say I go to UC UCCS and I pay uh, the tuition. Oh, tutoring, okay, yeah, I'm sorry, that was the interpreter. Yeah, he's if I go to UCCS and I need a tutor, um, how do I go about paying for that cost? Okay, so we actually have free tutoring at UCCS, but there are options for you. Every university and college has different types of tutors out there. If you need to pay for it, sometimes you can get it paid for through financial aid. Sometimes you can use that work-study money to pay for tutors. But the best option is to look for free tutoring. Okay. okay. So here's a list of different types of scholarships that we offer at UCCS. So know that there are lots of them out there for you. If you go to uccs.edu backslash financial aid, we can definitely show you what some of these requirements are. But keep in mind, there are scholarships out there for everybody. Coca-Cola gives scholarships out to students. Duct tape gives scholarships out to students. Um, Home Depot, all kinds of different companies and organizations do this. There are scholarships out there for short people, tall people, deaf people, blind people, um, left-handed, right-handed. There's a lot of different scholarships out there good grades, bad grades, there's just different scholarships out there for you. So if you start working now, you can start applying for scholarships and start earning money to go to school. I always like to tell students that if you use it like a part-time job, the, the amount of money that you can probably make between the time you uh, start working on the scholarships to the time you graduate high school can be rather large. 
So if you're looking for different scholarships, start working on it now. Take 10 or 15 hours a week. You're online right now surfing Facebook and Twittering and doing all that stuff as it is. How about using some of that time to look at scholarship opportunities and to start applying for those scholarship opportunities? Because the more time and effort you put into it, the better your chances are that you're going to be able to piece a lot of small scholarships together to create a really good foundation for your education. All right, then housing. This could be a big part of determining a school. Is where are you going to live when you get there? Do you like where you're living? Do you like what you're looking at? Well, at UCCS, we have suite-style living, but some other colleges and universities have dormitory-style living. So it just really depends on what you're looking for in that university. Does anybody know the difference between dormitory and suite-style living? And if you don't, I'll tell you. <laughs> suite-style living it means it's just like a hotel room where the bathroom is in your room. You usually share with three to four other people and you're able to get that experience with a roommate without having to share a bathroom like in a dormitory that is with 50 to 60 other students and it's like a locker room and it's never much fun. So, different room examples, right? There's a lot of different options for you out there so you as an individual can be successful and that you can be in an area that you want to be in. You can get to know people inside of housing. At UCCS, housing includes, and these are questions you should be asking of all the different colleges that you're looking at, is what does housing include? It includes your room, your meal plan, your utilities, cable, Wi-Fi, internet, parking, and laundry. Ask the schools, do they, do they include all these things? Because these could be extra costs that you're not ready to pay for if you're not asking if they're included um, up front. Then orientation. Why would going to an orientation be incredibly important to students? Well, the reason for that is this is when you get to register for your um, classes. This is when you get to be there. Does anybody know how many hours a day you're in the college classroom on average? Three to five, Three to five? okay. Anybody else have any guesses? Seven. Seven. Maybe six. Three, around there. Six. Seven, six. Six, three to five. How many hours a day are you in the high school classroom? Seven. Seven, okay. So, I'm sorry, again, you said in class? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one hour? Oh, actually, each class is one hour. I'm guessing. I don't know. One hour per class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think she had a question. Seven classes, so it's seven hours a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. Hold on. Do you need to have the ID? Or do you have an ID that you have to bring with you every day? Or so when you go to orientation, you get your student ID, and that ID will give you access to things like the recreation center, the computer labs. If you're living in housing, it'll be a key to your room. Different, um, it, it pretty much covers everything for you. So mm -hmm. do I, is it like a um, swipe card? How does it work? Uh -huh. you it's just like a swipe card. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the average is seven. You don't need a key. <laughs> right. <laughs> the average is between six and eight hours a day that you're in the high school classroom right now, right? So isn't it cool that you're in the college classroom only an average of three hours a day? By going to orientation, you're able to register for your classes and get a really nice schedule that fits your needs to make you successful. If you wait till the last minute, you can get a schedule that doesn't look or work real well for your schedule. So by going to orientation early, you're able to really get to be into those classes that you need to be in at times that you want to be in them. Then you need to be looking at support services when you're looking at college and universities. What is there for you? At UCCS, we have our academic centers for excellence. These are tutoring centers for you that are free for students that are able to get you that extra help in math, communication, writing, science, and foreign language. There's even a center that will help you with sign language. So there's just different options there. You can work in these centers and get paid to help other students learn sign language. 
So these are just different options for you there. The first year experience office is there to help you through your entire first year of school. It's there to support you and to give you that extra attention and that extra help that you as students might need to be successful. So there's a lot of different options out there for you. You can definitely look at opportunities like studying abroad. You can learn about other cultures and other belief systems by visiting our Mosaic office. It's a multicultural office on campus where you can learn about other people. People can learn about you. You have a safe envir environment to express yourself. Then we want you to get involved on campus. You're spending a lot of money to go to school. You're getting an education, but you're in this place that's not at home, so we want you to be a part of that community. We want you to get involved as a part of that community. Yep, Greek life, so sororities and fraternities. Okay, so there's a lot of different opportunities there. We want you to be involved. We want you to be a part of the campus. If there's a club or an organization that we don't have for you, you can start that club or organization. So if four of you got together and decided that you wanted to start that shoe tying club that you've always dreamed about, you're more than welcome to do that. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, get, so we want you to get involved and we want you to be a part of campus life and to be happy to be a part of the community. Like flag football, <laughs> like flag football too? Yeah, exactly, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Mm -hmm. All right, so then with student life and activities, there's sports on campuses that you want to be involved in. Just about all college campuses have some type of athletics that you can be involved in and be part of that community and that recreation. So if you're looking, we have NCAA sports. These are varsity level athletics that you can either play or you can go and watch and cheer on and be proud of. The basketball team at UCCS made it to the playoffs this year. We were really proud of them. We sent students up to Denver to watch them play and to cheer them on. Um, if you want to just kind of play sports for fun and have a good time, there's club level sports, there's intramural sports. How often does your master come out? <laughs> so it depends on the year. Um, but we are in the city of Colorado Springs. So he could be on campus every day but not, not often. What's water polo? Okay, so water polo. Have you ever seen polo on horses? So mm -hmm. it's the same concept, but in a swimming pool and no horses. We don't want the horses to drown. Oh, do you mind me adding a comment? Absolutely. Uh, it's the same concept as soccer, too. It's like soccer in the water. And you throw in the ball, um, you, have to, you have to use your hands, your feet are tied, and you stay in the water. So um, you're tossing the ball back and forth, forth and then there's a hole. Um, so it's essentially like soccer in water. Huh. So definitely. So he explained it a lot better than I did. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> oh, perfect. But you can get involved in things that you've never heard about before and be part of that club and that or those organizations and just have a good time on the college campus. So by doing that, it makes you proud to be a part of that community. And then also you could do things like wanting to be a part of a college because of their mascot. I think we have a very cool mascot. We're the Mountain Lions. We don't share a mascot with our um, other university, which is <coughs> University of Colorado in Boulder, who are the Buffalo. Well, there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, but Mountain Lions eat Buffalo. And we're very proud of this. Number two, is that we want you to get behind it and really rally behind the university and be a part of our campus community. And then she has one second. Mm -hmm. Actually, two questions. Okay. Oh, I lost my child. Okay, yeah. What is that intramurals I see up there on the PowerPoint? And billiards? Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Sam, what were you saying? I can't spell. Okay, intramurals. Oh. 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 Okay. Uh -huh. And my second question was a little bit further down. What is uh, billiards? Okay. Oh, pool. Pool is billiards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a game. Pool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So intramurals are a set of sports and activities that any student can participate in. So if you're looking at varsity level sports, you have to try out for those teams and get selected to be on those teams and meet <laughs> their requirements. If you want to play a club level sport, you usually have to try out for those teams as well. But intramural sports are for everybody. So it doesn't matter if you're good at it or if you're really bad at it, but if you just want to try it, you can go out and um, play on those teams. So if you want to go shoot pool and play billiards, or if you want to go bowling or play kickball, there's different options for you. We should add skiing. We should add skiing. Okay, so come to UCCS. Tell them that you want that to be a part of their club sports. We do have a skiing club on campus, so you can be a part of that and you can get that started. Mm -hmm. what about, you need snowboarding too. Snowboarding, and we do have snowboarding, it's just not an intramural sport. We have what we call the Snow Riders Club. It's one of these clubs, um, one of these clubs here. Um, they call them the Snow Riders. They go skiing, they go snowboarding, they do a lot of ice climbing, things along those lines. Ice climbing? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, is that dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so these are your next steps. You want to apply to any university that you're looking at that you're interested in going to. Tour their campuses, visit them, bring your families with you to visit them. Then we want you to complete your financial aid and your housing applications because this is what's going to help you pay for school and make these dreams a reality. And then we want you to attend an orientation and register for classes. <laughs> okay. And then become And then you can become a part of any college campus that you choose to become a part of. Yes, so if you're taking a look, um, if you're talking with your admissions counselors, that's kind of part of that approach where, yes, we're looking at your, your grades and those levels there, but we want to also know who you are as a person. And by being a smaller university, we're, we're personally able to look at you individually. So we're some of the larger schools, they'll, they'll try their hardest, but they may not be able to look at you on an individual level. So if that's something that is a concern to you, you should definitely be taking a look at the smaller schools that can really provide that one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, the other question is on the uh, larger, smaller school kind of scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, how major would you say your uh, like quote-unquote filter scale would be? The filter scale, as in? Uh, basically filtering students out. Oh, okay. So. That goes back to this index chart. We do not have a cap on how many students we'll admit. We do have requirements, and as long as students are meeting those requirements, we're going to admit you. Um, if you don't meet those requirements, that's when we'll sit down and talk and try to get you on a success plan. Mm -hmm. uh, how many applications um, does UCS, UCS get out of all the applications that are sent to UCCS, how many does UCCS accept um, in the freshman class? Okay, so we usually see about seven to 8,000 applications a year. We typically admit about three to 4,000 of those, and of those three to 4,000, we usually see about 11 to 1,200 students actually attend. Per class, 
So we go off of what we call credit hours. And credit hours are how many hours a week you're in the classroom. So if you're in that classroom for that one class for three hours a week, that would be three credit hours. And that's usually about $300 a credit hour. So you could be looking at about $900 a class. more questions? Um, we kind of have to wrap up here. Uh, any questions for James? No? no? All right. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. And thank you, James. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right.